All right, so welcome back to the channel, guys. And as you would have seen, I have new seats. So I sold my old Stradia 3s and got this set. Uh, I'll tell you why in a second. Uh, but this is my fourth time ordering, ordering Stradias. I've had it twice uh, with my S2000 and now twice with my NSX. Uh, the only reason why I replaced my old ones, which were also red, is because they were just the normal Stradias. Whereas these are the Drift King editions. I'll un unwrap them in a second. But basically it's a different skin, different seat skin on it. Uh, so let me go ahead and unwrap these, this and then I'll show you around the seat. All right. So these are the Drift King versions as in Drift King as in Keiichi Suchiya. So if you don't know, he has his own um, bread collab seats. Um, previously, they were green, um, so they still offer the green versions, but obviously that doesn't go with anything in my car. So once these red ones came out, I pretty much fell in love. The problem that I had with the old Stradias that I had was that the normal Stradias that come with, um, um, the normal seat skins that come with the Stradias have this faux carbon stripe right here. Um, so it's black, looks black, and these two stripes. And so I wasn't a huge fan of that, um, and I thought it would grow on me, but it didn't. So once these came out at a later period of time, uh, I just fell in love. Uh, this is replaced with a like suede material. Um, as you will notice, it does have a green um, stitching on it to commemorate Suchia. You know his color is green that he has on his race suit and helmet and everything like that. So um, I'm not too worried about that because I did see that at Tokyo Auto Salon when I went and saw these seats in person. Um, but it's so subtle, like from any distance further than like two feet, it kind of looks like a gold, gold color. So I think it's cool. So along with the green stitching, uh, there's a gold king embroidery on there and a golden white. Um, logo right here with his name um, in English and Japanese. So otherwise the rest of the seat's the same. I still got the full carbon um, harness guides. You flip it around. This is the carbon version. So like all bread carbon seats, um, it's just a layer of carbon. So there's no change in weight. Um, if I put it, throw it on its side, you can see, well, okay, I'll throw this one on its side. If I go on its side, you can see that the carbon just ends there and there's just the fiberglass shell. It's just one layer of carbon for looks. That's typical. And for those um, not familiar with uh, Stradias, basically they are a reclining bucket. So the seat does recline. I'm going to do a full review of this later on after I install it. But um, just a quick quick change of, from the Stradia 2s. The harness guides shape changed and these brackets are now steel only. So for the Stradia 2s, um, they offered them in steel and aluminum. So steel was always in black, aluminum was gray. Um, and the aluminum came on the carbon, the higher end Stradia. So the carbon, carbon Kev Kevlar, um, the uh, um, chameleon color, I forgot what that's called. Um, and the black steel you typically only came on the sport models, which was a fiberglass um, a glitter back. Uh, seat which is a little bit cheaper so now uh, with the Stradia 3s I believe what I read or what I either read it or saw it on their Reds YouTube channel they strengthen the whole uh, reclining mechanism and uh, I believe uh, you know what what I can assume is that strengthening also included making the standard uh, the steel standard on all the seats so there's no more aluminum option uh, that's a welcome welcome change for me. Uh, you know, stronger is better when it comes to safety items like seats. 
So let me go ahead and unwrap the rest of this and show you around. All right, so included with the seats is a bunch of documentation, uh, instructions specifically for Stradias because only the, well, they include the entire manual for various types of seat rails that they have, but it looks like they also included a separate piece for RO and LR because those are the only two types of rails that do fit with Stradias and, and Gaius. So along with that, there's some documentation, serial numbers that go along with your seats. I believe you need this stuff to uh, for Japan um, when you get your car inspected um, because they need to know that the seat passed, uh, you know, safety requirements and things like that. A couple of stickers, some spacers, and um, some hardware. These spacers are new to me. I don't think I've ever seen those before. Uh, and it looks like they are used for um, RO rails. I'm using LR. In my experience, uh, LR are lower. Uh, for the S2000, I've had RO and LR. Uh, RO I use for like some Recaros, but those rails seem to sit higher. I think on the, on Brid's website also uh, shows that the LR lowers more. And so RO has this um, brace that goes across, which I think limits how low the seat can go, whereas LR doesn't. The downside to LR is that they only work with Stradias and Gaius, whereas RO typically work with any type of Recaro reclining seat. So, like for me, I have LR rails for S2000, and I'm having a hard time selling them because not too many S2000s out there um, want to rock Stradias and Gaius. Um, it's not a quite not a popular seat for uh, like probably for how expensive they are. Um, whereas if I had RO rails, I could sell those no problem because tons of people uh, have Recaro um, reclining seats, SR series, that type of thing. Um, but anyway, I want to sit lower. I always like to sit as low as possible. So here's a little blown up instruction manual on how to install it. Uh, the other thing that's new, back to the seat, the other thing that's new that I've never seen before is this little, looks like it's a weight sensor type of thing. So I don't know how to read all the, what's going on here, but it looks like it's a sensor for some vehicles. It plugs into like the seatbelt receptacle. My car definitely doesn't have anything like that. So I don't want to tear it out though. So I'm probably just going to install the seat and then just tuck this below, tuck this below in here, below the seat. But that's definitely new. Uh, I've never seen that in any other Australia before. So that is it. Uh, let me show you the bottom real quick, I guess. So here's the bottom. This sticker is also new. I don't know if that's COVID related, antibacterial processed. Um, so this is typically what the bottom of Australia looks like. It's a nice, really nice, really nice glossy gel coat finish on it. Um, the welds look really good. It's a really nicely constructed seat. And yeah, these are my favorite seats. Um, I'll let you know why when I install them, but I'm gonna do a little comparison between the stock seats and the Stradias once I get them installed and let you know um, what, why this is the four, my fourth time buying them and why I love them so much. Okay, to install these seats, um, you're gonna use the provided hardware, which are these bolts right here, and a five millimeter Allen wrench. Uh, and what you're gonna do is, these bolts are gonna screw into these right here, these four corners. Um, and they are going to go through, again, this is the LR rail. They are gonna go through these center holes right here you can see with the marking right here so uh, it takes a little finagling the uh, I should note that the instructions for the LR rail looks like it says to remove the side mounts because the bolts is showing to remove these bolts whereas this one doesn't so I'm not sure why they um, have uh, implying again I'm, I didn't translate this so I'm just guessing that's what that means but I'm not sure why they're telling you to remove those because it can be done with these on. I've done it before. And important to note is the LR rails require the use of these, this S bracket for the seatbelt receptacle, uh, which they do include. However, all they include is 
in here, which is in this box. And as you can see, you need this piece right here, this flat, this um, low profile bolt and nut. You need it to attach your seatbelt receptacle, but you also need another set for the bottom part right here, which I assume is what this means. So uh, important to note, if plan ahead, uh, you're going to need to buy an extra set of this low profile bolt, nut and bolt, in order to get the seat mounted to your car with the LR rail. Okay, what you need to do to mount these up is slide the rail so that the front of the seat um, shows the, um, uh, so this part basically doesn't block the hole so you can mount it up. So what I did is mount up these first two, the front two, uh, loosely so I can have a little bit of left and right up and down play because then you're going to have to slide this rail downwards and insert the bolt through one of these holes and this side is going to take a little bit of finagling um, but I will show you how to do that. Okay so I slid the rail down and you can see just see through that hole that I lined it up with the threaded portion of the seat rail and right there as well you can see it through that hole. So that one's a little bit difficult to reach. Um, this one just goes straight through. I'm not sure you know, there's really nothing they could have done, I guess, because you don't have a straight shot at it. And they probably didn't want to notch this to do that. But uh, it's doable, so I'll show you my technique. All right, so I forgot about this one right here. This hole is too big for, or too small for these washers. So how do you do that? I put this on the end of a magnet and I'm gonna to have to feed it through the end of the rail and hold it there while I try to use, uh, insert the screw through this hole and uh, bullseye it through the two washers and then tighten it down. So that's gonna be the plan for that one. So this one's a gigantic pain just because of the angle. Uh, what you have to do is loosen this bolt up so you have enough room to um, raise it up with your fingers. And what you want to do is raise it up and then you can get have enough space to get an Allen through there. It'll be at an angle but at least you'll be able to turn it. And of course what also helps is a rounded uh, Allen. Okay so of course once you have everything in just give it one final tighten all the way around and then you're good to go to work on the uh, seatbelt receptacles. Okay, so next up is we're gonna mount up the seatbelt receptacle. Uh, this is an S2000 receptacle. It does work with the NSX belt. I just have, I'm using this because I had it left over from my S2000. Uh, I purchased these separately. Um, and so again, bread, provides you with this S bracket and this low profile bolt setup. So the reason why you want to use this with the Stradias is because if you don't, the seatbelt is going to sit further down and it does make contact uh, with this um, bolster on the upper part of the seat. Um, it actually does still contact it with even with this extension, but it's not so bad. I think it makes contact with like the bottom part. So. Um, it kind of just, it kind of gets sandwiched between these two bolsters. Uh, so this kind of helps alleviate that. And so what you're gonna wanna do is grab your extra set of low profile bolt, um, slide it through. You're gonna recline the entire seat like this and then go ahead and just slide it, slide it through. So like that. And then, so this is a 24 millimeter head, by the way. Uh, these are kind of a pain just because they're super low profile. So it's hard to get a wrench on there. Almost forgot to mention they do include the spacer. So the spacer fits directly into this hole right here and uh, takes up the, the slack in the, the bolt. And then according to the instructions, this uh, serrated washer typically goes right against the nut. So we're gonna go ahead and put the flat washer first, the serrated washer, and then the nut. We're gonna go ahead and give that a good hand tight and then uh, get a wrench on the back as best as we can and uh, 
a socket on this side and give it get a give it a good tighten. So I am going to get an open end of the 24 millimeter wrench on there. Um, it's so tight I can't get the the box end on because the seat gets in the way. Uh, and then I'm going to kind of position this as straight as possible. And the nut is a 17 millimeter. That is tightened up nicely. And then this one's a little loose, so this one kind of annoys me. Once it gets loose, it kind of flops around. So I'm going to kind of get that one into position and then give that one a tighten as well. All right, so I got this all tightened up. Nice and, nice and tight. This is a little bent um, at angle. Um, ideally, you want it to be straight, you know, in case you get in an accident. Uh, and tension, it's a sudden tension on the belt. You don't want there to be a sudden slack once this gets forced straight. Um, but this this should be okay. It's not it's not too angled, so I'm not gonna worry about too much about that. But yeah, so the driver's seat is done, and I'm just going to repeat that for the passenger seat. So I will pick up with you guys uh, once both of them are assembled. Okay. This is gonna be a quick comparison between the stock seat and the Stradia 3. Um, I am 5'6 to 5'7 ish, uh, so I'm kind of short, and this is the, this stock seat is adjusted so that my leg uh, is at, at, you know, clutch in all the way is slightly bent. Um, steering wheel in the NSX is tilt and telescoping, so this is adjusted um, to where I like it with the elbows bent like this. Um, in this position, if I measure, I'm about three inches from the headliner. And so um, we will see what the difference is in the Stradia. Of course, the back angle, um, the seat versus the Stradia, I don't have it exactly. I'm not gonna be able to make it exactly the same, but this is pretty much where I like it uh, with the stock seat. So uh, I'll try to adjust it to where, we'll see where I adjust it with the Stradia and how, you know, that'll affect the height, head height. But um, the stock seat, you know, while it's comfy, it doesn't hold you at all, especially being leather and especially being this old leather where it's hard and smooth. Um, so it just doesn't hold you at all. Um, I prefer, I've always preferred bucket seats ever since I sat in one. And the Stradia is the best of both worlds where basically it feels like a bucket, holds you just like a bucket, um, uh, however it can recline. Um, and so I've had bucket seats before, pole positions, uh, Sparco seats, um, you know, Recaro's, uh, SPG's. Um, those are all nice seats. However, for the pole positions, uh, which is a common mod for the NSX, um, the pole position back angle doesn't agree with me. Um, I've owned pole positions twice, and both times I sold them for the same reason. I just needed like a slight bit more recline on the back. Um, and so uh, the Stradias have been the seat for me. I've owned uh, the Stradias four times. Uh, I don't know if I, meant, I probably mentioned that already. But um, yeah, uh, we're gonna go ahead and go with those. Um, the reason why I don't go with any other kind of reclining seat, like a Recaro reclining seat, is because all the Recaros, the SR series Recaros that I've sat in, um, you don't feel, I don't personally feel like I sit in the seat like you do in a bucket seat. You're not, I'm not sitting in it. I'm not being um, um, held tight. Uh, most, if not all, of the SR Recaro seats that I've sat in, um, I feel like I'm on the seat. It feels very similar to a stock seat, actually, um, where the, the lower cushion is very thick. Um, and the it does, you know, the SR series have some nice thigh bolsters. Um, but again, you don't feel, it doesn't have a nice seating position that um, bridge seats do with the low max seating system. So um, it's hard to explain, you just have to uh, sit in them yourself and try it out. So let's go ahead and uh, take these stock seats out and throw the um, Stradias in. All right, so in order to get the stock seats out, you're gonna want to remove the two bolts at a time, either front or rear, start at the front or rear. So I remove, I personally remove the two rear ones first, um, then slide, power the seat all the way back and remove the two front 
And then the stupid part about the NSX is that the seat bottom of the seat belt is connected to the seat itself. So then that after you get all four bolts off of the seat brackets, you have to lift up the seat and either, the reason I have a removing blanket on the door sill is that I can put lay the seat on there or you can just remove the seat completely and put it on the outside of the car. The seat belt obviously will stretch long enough. But uh, for you guys, I'm going to remove the seats put it up here and then uh, uh, remove the bottom of the seatbelt. Oh, when you also have to uh, lift the seat up and unplug the seatbelt um, power seatbelt plug. So yeah, you definitely want to protect your door sill, especially because the door sill has a leather piece on it. Um, and then you're gonna wanna use a 17 millimeter to remove the bottom of the seatbelt from the seat. Be careful not to lose all the washers and spacers. Just gonna lay that right there. And then you can remove the seat. Okay, so a quick note, um, I can't show you guys because I don't wanna move the camera, sorry. But the plug for the seat belt, um, instead of leaving it sticking out of the carpet, I tuck it underneath the carpet because um, what happened to me was I damaged the plug a little bit um, when it kind of contacted the Stradia, last Stradia that I had. Um, because the Stradia sits so low, um, sliding it back and forth, I caught it a little bit and damaged the plug a little bit. So now I, both sides, I um, um, pull up the carpet and route the cable underneath just to um, get it out of the way. Now, um, to install the Stradias, it's going to be the opposite order of operation. We're going to get the seat, sit it on the sill, and then um, install the seat belt to the seat. Okay, and for the um, connecting this seatbelt to the um, Stradia, uh, actually, I purchased another set of the flat of the low profile bolt set, um, and I installed it on the uh, seat rail before installing it to the seat. So here's the three pieces in the uh, We'll profile a bolt in here and then you're just going to go ahead and attach the seat belt to it and make sure that it's not twisted the wrong way okay once you have the uh, seat belt attached like this then you can just drop the seat in and attach all four bolts okay so i do have the strider 3 in as you can see i have it adjusted um, to basically the same um, leg extension that i had with the stock seats the back angle is about where i like it um, you can see my my arms are about the same. I would say I have about three and a quarter to three and a half inches of clearance. So uh, not a drastic improvement, but uh, an improvement on, nonetheless, about of a quarter to a half an inch uh, lower than stock. And of course it holds immensely better. So I guess I can talk about the difference between the Stradia and the Gaius. Um, prior to generation three, so the first two generations, the Stradia and Gaius or exactly the same except for this thigh bolster. The Gaius comes, has a piece that comes out at a sharp angle and sits like this, holds your thighs up higher, um, which obviously makes it this space for ingress and egress a lot harder for you to get into. So the Stradia has always been my choice um, for a daily driver kind of um, type of vehicle where it's easy to get in and out. Um, for the third generation though, uh, Brit changed it where the Gaius has a different upper now. So the wings are more aggressive on the Gaius versus the Stradia, so the full seat is completely different. Um, and again, the reason I just love these seats is you feel, you feel engulfed and you feel surrounded by the seat, um, holds you and I feel really comfortable. Um, and you know, I can take corners um, very confidently. And as far as whether the seat is for you, uh, I always suggest sitting in the seat if possible because you can go online and a lot of people are like, oh, does the seat fit this waist size, whatever, whatever. But everyone, everyone's body shape is different. You could weigh the same and have the same um, waist size as someone, but um, their body weight could be distributed differently. Some people have longer torsos, shorter legs and vice versa. Um, taller people, I've heard, com might com complain about certain seats. I don't know about this seat specifically, 
but sometimes the wings push people's shoulders forward, um, which they don't like. Me being short, um, this doesn't bother me at all. I don't feel my shoulders being pushed in at whatsoever. So uh, this seat fits me perfectly. I love it um, and I couldn't be happier. So, and last but not least, the you do have an option with Stradiers and Gaius to order a low normal cushion or a low cushion. So the normal cushion or the normal cushion, this piece right here at the front under right under your knees, uh, it's shaped like a wedge. So um, in a low cushion um, situation, uh, the low cushions are flat, not, not shaped like a wedge. So for this car, the NSX, the seat sits very low on the floor pan. So where my, where, where my knees end up, you know, like if you look at my gas pedal on my right leg, um, my leg is upwards and um, pretty much with my leg at full extension, like I said, I still have a little bit of a bend in my leg. It's barely touching. It's touching the bottom of the cushion, but I'm not putting a lot of pressure on it. Where it's so, so there, in other words, it's supporting my leg. Um, whereas I felt that if I had a flat, uh, the a low cushion, um, it would not support my leg as much because it would be a lot lower. It would not be in a wedge shape to um, support my legs at all. It would be flatter. In my S2000, I used, I chose the low cushion because uh, the seating position was a little bit higher in that chassis. So um, I think it just depends on uh, your preference, but I went with the normal, cu normal cushion uh, for the NSX and uh, it's perfect. All right guys, so I waited to get the car out of the garage so we can see the seats in daylight. So here are the seats. I'm super, super happy with them, as you can probably tell. Um, I mean, again, they're the same as my the seats I had before, just a different skin. But I just really love the fact that they don't have the black parts on the sides. Um, and, you know, it's cool that they're limited edition too. Um, of course, I added the ASM shoulder uh, seatbelt guides. You know, I need to get this, maybe I'll get this seatbelt cleaned the next time I get my car detailed. But as you can see, you know, Obviously, with him being really old, uh, this car has a lot of seen a lot of use, and you know they're dirty. So this kind of helps protect not only the seat from being dirty, but from wear as well. So of course, the color doesn't match perfectly because these are um, well, they're ASM, um, which typically does Recaro, um, and so this is some type of Recaro red. Um, but you know, it's good enough for me. I'd rather have you know, keep the wear and tear off of my brand new seat than have a exact match in red. <clears throat> well, here's a look, here's a look at the carbon. The carbon is, uh, you know, barely visible, but it's there. It's, it's a cool feature. So one of the reasons why I love just having red seats in this car is having a black NSX with black interior. There's just so much black. When I had the stock seats in, it reinforced my belief that, you know, I need something that for in the interior to pop, especially, you know, from walking far away. Uh, it The red seats just kind of draw, have give a little bit of attention to the car and have, have a little bit of draw to the interior, which it would be otherwise just you know, black and not exciting at all. Not that black can't be exciting, it can be clean and good looking. And, you know, I had that, you know, I went with a black and red interior, black, basically, basically black with red stitching interior from my 2000, but, um, you know, it's cool to have kind of like a, a nice pop in the interior and otherwise in the car in general with, with the whole car being black, so. Very happy with these seats again. Um, let me know in the comments if there's any questions you have. Uh, you know, you want, dim dimensions should be available online on Brid's website, but if you have any questions, um, comments, anything you'd like me to review in the future about these seats, uh, let me know. 
Otherwise, uh, thanks for watching.